Warp Spinster here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for spending some time with me today. As you can see, I'm going to be working with the Funky Pineapple Geese again today. I did finish appliquing as much of this as I was going to do to this point, which is actually what I already had done on the center seams here. And then at the top, I did invisible thread with a zigzag stitch. And you know, it's okay. It's what you might expect. And then down at the bottom, I used white thread with an invisible stitch, invisible stitch, a zigzag stitch. And I don't know that there's much difference. I might in fact, just prefer the white just the various little bit. Although when it goes over a print like this, sorry about the lighting, it's a gloomy day and I rely on natural lighting here. This is, when it crosses over these prints, it shows more than it would with an invisible thread. And next up are these bias strips that I'm going to be applicating on in black. There's one in black, just solid black, and one in a black and white circus stripe from Michael Miller. And I did in fact get some more of that fabric much longer and I won't be able to get any more. So I'm trying to stock up a little bit while I wait for another perfect black and white stripe. I did manage, because this is a quarter inch stripe, which is very handy, I did manage to, when I had to um, make the strips longer, connect strips, then um, I was able to do a pretty good job, I think, on matching up the stripes at the seam. So the first step is going to be to apply this black strip, which is going to go from the top. And please excuse the lack of perfect pressing here. It's going to get moved around under the machine again today. So pressing it is kind of a futile endeavor right now. So this is going to go from the very top of the quilt and then down to the bottom down there and it will end right there. Now for this, I think I'm going to use black thread and probably the railroad stitch. I discovered that the cross stitch that I like doesn't necessarily work well as an edge applique stitch, at least where you can only see half of it. And since I have matching thread here, it will end up looking funky and uneven. I just know that from practice and experience. So I will apply that, probably that railroad stitch. I've been thinking that maybe I think in this case, just using a few dabs of the glue stick that I use, the sew line glue stick. I actually got this for English paper piecing, but I use it a lot for other things too. I think I will put just a few dabs on that and it will work fine. When I get to these strips, they are gonna have more, much more serious curves to them. So I think I'm actually going to, I will probably do a few little dabs of the glue stick and then um, thread baste it down the middle because it's too easy for me to shift things. Even if there's a little dab of glue there, things can still shift in between. So I think I will just be doing some thread stitching and or thread basting. And as I'm doing the curves anywhere here, I'm going to be sure that I pay most attention to the inside of the curve here. Because this is biased, the outside will stretch to whatever I want it to do. If I stretch it, if I do the outer curve first and I end up stretching it, then it's going to be harder to pull in this inner curve and I'll end up with pleats and funky things in the, in the stitching. So I don't want to do that. Anyway, that is next step. I made plenty of black here. <laughs> I will have lots of bias left over. And then I will apply these two are the last things. And assuming the stitching goes well today, hopefully we can get to that point. 
Oh, I should note that this one on the side here that I wasn't sure I was going to be happy with because there were a couple of funky things. I did, in fact, rip the whole thing out and redo it, and I'm, I'm much happier. You know, the lesson was that I should have practiced it on something before I did it here, but I got excited about it and wanted to do it, so there we are. All right, so first step is going to be starting this at the top, and I'm going to lay this out on a larger surface than I have here on the table. And get this sort of basted, glue basted on. And then I will stitch down the sides and we'll see what happens. I think it will be good. All right, I'm off. I will be back with you when I have finished stitching that. I have stitched half of it, one side of the strip. And I, I did use stabilizer under here. I pulled this out just to try something um, up here at the top, but I did use stabilizer. It's a pretty intense stitch. So each of these stitches off to the side, as well as the one that goes down the middle, it's like three stitches on top of each other. So it was um, sort of pulling up the fabric, but it works fine after I press it. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with that look. I don't know that I want it with the black and white stripe, but I think I will go ahead and do that on the other side of this black strip. And then I will let you know where I'm going with this in the end. All right. The other side is completed. I haven't removed the stabilizer or done any pressing yet because I still have things to do and it will get manipulated around under the machine. So now I'm ready to do the striped bias and that's going to be a little trickier because it has curves and I may as well just go ahead and show you where I'm headed with this. So I'll put up a photo of the diagram that I did in Procreate and the name of the quilt is Bungie. Now I am not a fan of heights. <laughs> Didn't used to bother me, but I, for years now, I have not liked heights much at all. So I've never been tempted to do any bungee jumping. And you know, as I look at this stitching here, it looks like kind of steps or the, the spikes that they have on telephone poles where the workers can climb the pole and <laughs> kind of reminds me of steps are going up to the top wherever you're jumping off for the on the bungee but there are a couple of spots where just actually I think there's just one where I was a little bit off from the edge here and I'm thinking you know that's a <laughs> that's probably a broken step and yet another reason I don't want to go bungee jumping and some are a little bit longer than the others. Anyway, it's uneven steps are another one of my not favorite things. All right, that's enough of that. So bungee. I am going to start out, I think, at the bottom and do the curve there and then work my way up from there. And as I said, I'm going to um, probably glue baste it a little bit and then thread baste it so that I keep that curve and especially and are ready to are ready that I am ready <laughs> to do the inside of the curve here. I was watching um, Lisa Heinzel, who is an Austrian uh, young woman who does junk journal things and she does her videos in both she does a German version and an English version, and she just does so well in the English version. I'm just amazed. But <laughs> today, what was it? She said um, she'd had a, a long, hard day, and she said, so excuse when, what did she say? Excuse me if I, excuse me if I speak weird things. And I thought, yes, that's me. Please excuse me if I speak weird things today. 
All right, so that's the idea. And I think on this one, I don't want anything to detract from this diagonal stripe thing. I really want it to feel like it's just floating in the air. So I think I will use invisible thread and a narrow zigzag stitch on this. I will go away and do that. I need a larger space to lay that out and do the stitching. So I will go away and do that and then come back and see what happens. It's good to have to be getting these ugly edges, sorry guys, ugly, <laughs> ugly edges covered up. And of course, I always like the black and white stripes, so this should be fun. I will be back, I promise. I don't know how long it'll be, but I'll be back. I have finished all of the applique. When I did these uh, bias strips, the black and white strips, I decided to go with an invisible thread. So I'm using a monopoly thread from um, Superior Threads. And I started off with 1.0 width and 1.0 also on the length. And that worked okay, actually, for these bias strips. They had a very even edge turned under, finished edge turned under. But when it came to these blocks, I switched to a 1.5 because 1.0 wasn't enough to really cover and catch when I had these seams. So I had to switch that over. And I need to just kind of double check all of this to make sure that I have indeed caught all the edges so that my long arm doesn't get caught up in them. I My long arm is back. Molly did come home last week and it took me a while to get her reassembled and all of her connections made, but that has been accomplished. It, I just have two or three quilts in the lineup before this. I'm not entirely sure that I won't do this on my domestic machine. I'll see. I want to play around with what it, what the quilting will be. If it's mostly straight line or the gentle curve kind of things, I can easily do that without having to do free motion. And I'm, I'm just not good on free motion on my domestic machine. I'm in awe of people who are. I am not one of them. So I think that's it for this particular piece for now. I will try to get this pressed and maybe a photo of the whole thing up on Instagram and Facebook in coming days. But that's it for now. Um, next week, I think I already know what I want to do. Not sure yet, but it will be using scraps again and really hopefully making some progress on scraps, which are just out of control now, really out of control now. And I'm, I'm thinking for the following week, I'll be working more on finishing some pieces. I have a, a basket in the back that is just full of pieces to put together. And I also have some drawers over here that have things. So not all of them am I going to actually do anything with at this point but some things I am and Alice Wondering is one of them that's the red and black and white one and then the villages there are two separate ones for villages and I actually would like to do both of them so let me know in the comments which of those you think I should tackle next either Alice or the villages Last week, I whoops, it's upside down. Last week, I neglected to show you that I did applique these pieces on. I have not done anything for quilting or finishing because I'm still trying to figure out. Um, a couple of you had mentioned in the comments that you think this needs something, and I agree. That's why I haven't gone any further. I'm uh, someone had suggested another circle or. Um, a stripe of some sort, a strip, maybe with a stripe. I think just the two, I don't know if I want more stripes on here, but I'm thinking maybe some sort of ray effect with um, embroidery thread, like a big stitch sort of thing. And I'm thinking maybe coming out this way and having uneven 
rays, but I'm not sure. And until I really have a better handle on what I want to do with this, this is as far as it's going till. I know there needs to be something here before I start quilting it. So I was on it, I didn't abandon it. I'm just having to ponder that for a little while. And then finally, I want and finally I want to report on the voting for which of the quilt designs you think I should do next. And Boondoggle came out first. That uh, actually was the one I was leaning toward doing next anyway. So that was, thank you for that. And thank you all for your comments and suggestions. I appreciate that. Second was Glyph, which was based on the petroglyphs. And then Red Router was third. That was the black and white and uh, gray with a little bit of red in it. And then Entangle and Crikey were tied until a, a late vote came in and Entangle then became number four. That was the one with the pink and orange sort of flowing liquefied bit. And the results were actually the same. Uh, some people gave two or three choices and I took their first one to be their first choice. So I took them as being in order. So uh, what I just gave you were the, the first, how it came out for those who had those as number one. Now the total mentions, so it's sort of like ranked voting <laughs> that a couple states in the US have. Um, Boondoggle was still first, Router was second, then Glyph, then Entangle, and then Crikey. So Router and Glyph sort of switched in the ranking. So in, at any rate, Boondoggle came out on top, which is cool. So Boondoggle will be next up when I am ready to get started on that. And I'm I'm just about ready to because I'm sort of itching to get to those. Anyway, next week I have something else planned with my overflowing scrap bin. And I hope to see you for that. Again, your comments and suggestions are always welcome down below. How you might have done something differently, what you liked, what you didn't like as much. But if you say you didn't like it, then maybe some suggestions for how it might be done differently that would make you like it. It's, it's not that I, I don't want criticism, it's that you and I are different. We're all different and what we like is different. And I'm not expecting everyone to like what I do or agree with what I do, but I do like that to be an impetus for people to think about, um, well, I don't like that, why not? What would I do differently? What could I do that I would like? So I'm, I'm just hoping to provide a little bit of that pondering for everyone because that's what I'm doing here really is just thinking about things and making decisions and hoping that you are doing the same thing at your end of the camera. So I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. Mm -hmm.